The rationale for the fluoride treatment depends on the individual patient need. Things you need to consider are, does the patient demonstrate demineralization or are they caries prone? Do they have recession with cemental exposure? Or are they complaining also of dentinal hypersensitivity? So based on the patient's individual need is what you would discuss with them about why are you, you are providing uh, fluoride treatment for them. Overall, it helps to strengthen the enamel and cemental surfaces of the teeth. You would have your patient seated in the most upright position. You would ensure that the headrest had been placed as far forward as it could be. You would ask the patient to bring their head back and oftentimes placing the headrest this way is most effective, tightening it because we want to ensure that the patient cannot recline back to allow the fluoride to go down the throat. We want it to go out through the saliva ejector. So I would provide the patient with the rationale for the fluoride. I would ensure that I had all of the supplies that I needed, that they were seated in the most upright and forward position. The supplies that I would need to have obtained from Central Supply are the correct size fluoride tray, the correct fluoride, it would either be the acidulated phosphate fluoride that we have here or the neutral sodium fluoride that we have. This particular patient presents with some tooth colored sealants, therefore I want to use the neutral sodium fluoride and I have obtained five milliliters of the neutral sodium fluoride and as you take a look at the medicine cup you will see the five milliliter mark on that cup. I want to make sure that I have my fluoride kit that I've either removed from my um, unit or I have found in central supply. I have the fluoride kit ready to go. It's been opened. There are six cotton rolls. There's an appropriate size tray. I have a tongue blade and a cotton swab and I want to try the tray in first to ensure that it fits. With the upside going towards the maxillary arch, I would ask the patient to open I would seat the tray on the maxillary and mandibular, ask the patient to bite down, and I would assess to ensure that the tray fit all around the molar areas, which it does. I would ask the patient to open, remove the tray, and I would begin to load the fluoride in the tray. Using the tongue blade, I would dispense half the fluoride into the maxillary arch, and then half the fluoride into the mandibular arch. If I had a patient that had recession and I wanted to apply some additional fluoride, I might put a milliliter more of fluoride in there and leave that in the cup so that just prior to inserting the tray, I would paint that fluoride on with a cotton swab. So I'm going to divide the fluoride up equally, take a cotton swab, and just evenly distribute that fluoride into each tray on the maxilla and the mandible. As I'm doing that, I want to begin to discuss with the patient some of the instructions that I would provide for this fluoride treatment. The tray is ready, cotton swab into biohazard. I'm going to ask the patient at this point in time to remain wide open. I'm going to obtain the saliva ejector and turn it on. I'm going to give it to the patient and ask the patient to hold the saliva ejector intraorally and not close down around that saliva ejector at all to create a vacuum seal. At that point in time, I'm going to take four cotton rolls. I'm going to ask the patient to remain wide open, breathe through his nose, and not to swallow anything. I'm going to test my air syringe. I'll take the four cotton rolls all at once and I will isolate each vestibule. Place the cotton rolls down into the vestibules because I want to dry the oral cavity in the teeth. The fluoride uptake is more efficient in a drier environment. Assess your air again and let the patient know you're going to dry the teeth with air. Again, fluoride uptake is more efficient in a dry environment. Once I've completed drying thoroughly, I'll ask the patient to remain wide open and I'm going to remove all four cotton rolls at one time. I will keep my 
thumb and my index finger in the mouth in a C shape to allow the patient to remain open. I will obtain the tray. I'll ask the patient to remove the saliva ejector for a moment, bending the tray in half with the maxillary arch pointed upward. I'll seat the tray, again making sure that it fits over everything with your fingers and have the patient tap up and down to allow the fluoride to flow. Replace the saliva ejector immediately, asking them to stay wide open. Breathe through his nose, not to swallow. Place cotton rolls on either side of the saliva ejector and ask the patient to gently bite down. You would remain with the patient at this point for four minute time in order to have the most benefit from fluoride uptake. Initial uptake in the first minute is 80%. In the remaining three, it's 20%. See that the patient is upright in this position, breathing through his nose, chin is down, and the patient is not going to swallow. The other thing that I would do is obtain a paper towel for the patient with an overglove on and give this to the patient in the event that there would be any puddling or pooling of the um, fluoride or salivary flow. I would have also, prior to inserting the tray, had there been areas of recession, I would have painted on fluoride in those areas by just dabbing that onto the recessed areas just prior to putting the tray into the mouth and then I would have put the tray in the exact same way that we just uh, demonstrated here. This would be in for four minutes. At this point in time, I would go over any instructions with the patient that I had regarding oral hygiene instruction that we had performed during the appointment, any reminder about any referrals that we had made for the patient at that point in time, and then going over once again the benefits of the fluoride. I would also remind the patient that as I put that tray in, I had observed the clock and recognized that this was going to be in for four minutes and I would be watching and monitoring that four minute period of time. So as I'm approaching the end of that four minutes, I'm going to remind the patient that I'm going to take the tray and the rolls out and place them into biohazardous waste. I'm going to place the saliva ejector back onto the bracket arm and I'm going to ask the patient to expectorate thoroughly into the cuspidor so as not to swallow any of that fluoride. So I'm going to let the patient know at this point in time that they're going to open wide. And you can just hang on to that saliva ejector if you want. I'm going to take the tray and the rolls and I'm going to ask the patient to expectorate thoroughly in the cuspidor. At that time, I can also take that saliva ejector and turn it off. That's it. And you want to make sure that they expectorate everything, that they do not swallow any of that fluoride. And I'm reminding the patient at this point that the patient is unable to eat, drink, chew gum, smoke if they smoke, anything that would disrupt that fluoride bond at this point for 30 minutes. So I would observe the clock and let them know that exactly what that time was. So if I finish the fluoride treatment at 8 o'clock, it would be 8.30 that I would give them for a time. Then the student would take the mouth mirror and they would observe the tissues without hitting the teeth looking at the palate, the soft tissues of the buccal and labial mucosa, the tongue, and lift the tongue to the roof of the mouth and observe the floor of the mouth to ensure that there are no irritations of a red or white nature. And then the student would, at that point in time, inform the faculty that they had completed the fluoride treatment and they would ask the faculty to come over and go through that same procedure, assessing the soft tissues to ensure that everything was intact and there was no irritation at all. Once again, not hitting the tissues, at the hard tissue of the teeth with the mirror at all to disrupt that bond. And finally, reminding the patient once again that they're not going to be able to eat, drink, smoke, chew gum, anything that could disrupt that bond for 30 minutes and providing them with the actual time frame.